Hey everyone, what's up? Uh, just a FYI, uh, you know that ritual that I did where I uh, sort of uh, did a domination thing on someone? Uh, well, I just decided to fill you guys in. Um, Shortly after doing that ritual with the cauldron, um, and summoning Leonard, the uh, black goat of the Sabbath, um, I did the very next day receive a phone call from that individual. I will not name names. Uh, so I just wanted to let everybody know that after the black goat ritual, uh, that really did take place. Um, the spell was successful, and I did make that connection. So, if you guys want to go back to that the, that video, <coughs> and, uh, try it yourself, uh, I think you might find some success. Yeah. But what happened was, if you guys recall, I put a uh, lamb candle in there. Um, it was a candle to bring back uh, someone that has maybe strayed from you or to dominate someone. Um, and it has a lamb on it. Uh, you can get it in a botanica store. And um, I put some domination oil on it. Uh, and uh, I put it in the cauldron along with uh, some personal items that belong to the person. Again, I'm not going to name names, but um, I did make a connection, so uh, that worked. And of course I did the uh, black goat thing along with it too, the uh, saying of the black goat. <coughs> Invocation thing from a uh, Saint Cyprian book, um, and uh, got in touch with Leonard. Um, now he also wanted a offering of uh, some raw goat. So I I don't eat goat personally, so it was kind of hard for me to uh, <laughs> kind of do that, but. Uh, I did end up uh, going to a um, Mexican uh, grocer um, because he told me to make sure that it wasn't hala or kosher uh, because it was blasphemous, you know, for me to offer um, an animal that was butchered in the name of Yahweh. So, um,. Just uh, be aware that these guys, they want some type of payment. So I'm <laughs> originally, he uh, wanted me to sacrifice one, but uh, I said that uh, I didn't want to do that, and he saw that was going to be a problem. So I said, okay, just go to the butcher and get some meat then. <laughs> so I brought home some goat meat, and I put palm oil on it. Uh, I heated up palm oil and drizzled it on top of the goat meat, and, uh, and of course it gets a little ripe when you leave it uh, <laughs> in front of the altar for uh, seven days, so, uh, yeah. Um, you may want to shorten that period. <laughs> If you can leave it for uh, seven days, then uh, that, that might be um, fine, but it kind of got on my nerves. <laughs> but uh, as soon as he saw that I did that, uh, he made good with his word, and uh, of course the next day I received that phone call. So, yeah, I highly uh, recommend that you guys uh, try doing that. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I uh, just wanted to fill you guys in on that, uh, yep. and, uh, just gotta, 
Good Plumagera in. Uh, it's a Lilith, and she's got uh, the serpent, Samuel, wrapped around her. Um, it's actually a bootleg um, off of, I, I didn't realize this, of course, when I ordered this, uh, that it was actually uh, a Mexican bootleg of a uh, Veronese statue. <laughs> so I uh, actually sent them a message about it. Uh, telling them about it, and they said that the guy that sold that to me was actually on their radar already. Um, apparently, he's been doing this for a while. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, she is uh, pretty beautiful. Um, I added some paint to her because she came uh, just all color bread. So I uh, went over her with some paint and. Uh, Went over the Samuel snake as well. <sighs> so, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen to that seller. Uh, he was selling it on Etsy. And, uh, yeah. I uh, guess he's in trouble now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, apparently that's not the first time that he's done that. And if you look at his... Uh, other items it looks like he's ripping other people off as well uh, there's some baphomets on there that look uh, similar to ones that have already been released so and uh yeah and uh there's a little up there and there's a belphic or a ball of pure um, so, yeah, quite a few guys here. Um, that, uh, <clears throat> that guy that's next to her, um, that's Ishu, uh, Marcigo, and he is, he's also known as Ishu Bat, um, he's got wings and stuff. Um, his wings were red, and uh, I just decided to make him look like Samuel. So I gave him red hair, and I gave him a, kind of a gold color horns, but he's also got a tail. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, yeah, you probably can't see it. He's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I just thought it looked like Samuel. So, yeah. That's actually got him uh, seated on the throne there, so Samuel. Um, he's got black and red wings and he's playing some type of guitar. There. Um, a few of them. Um, this one issue guy right here, um, he can open, but he can also block roads. So, uh, he's pretty cool. Um, he's dressed kind of like a Roman. Um, and he's got like a cross and a dagger there. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's kind of hard for you guys to see because the top is a lot more. Ishu Trancatudo. Ishu Trancatudo is his name. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, the 
this is issue trigger we were. Um, yeah. And some of these are just like Mexican folk art statues thrown in there too and stuff. Like the uh, bobblehead here. Of course, we got the king here. Um, yep. so. And then look at this big scary guy here. So, yeah. Anyway, I love this one. I got him in Virginia not too long ago. He was pretty got this guy in Texas here. Um, I also got this guy in Texas. Um, there's a really cool store in Austin, Texas that sold this guy. Um, yeah, so. And this guy is a uh, Seven Roads guy. This vampire looking dude is a uh, issue for Ludo. So, yep. Then we got uh, issue Midnight. Um, there's another Pomagera. There's another issue guy. Um, issue Avenger here. Looks like a fallen angel and he's got the head of a goat. He's got he's got a go ahead here. It's like a sacrifice. <laughs> I got this beer. This is really old. Uh, gargoyle. I called him beer because he looks a lot like beer. The uh, Goetia fallen angel there. And then Andras. Got him in Salem, Massachusetts. So, and this is a uh, Morabo here. This guy sells offerings. Um, so, you know, there's another lady. This one's like a lady of the night here. She's got a cigarette in her hand. This two-headed one, um, I named down Italian, um, after the Goetia. <clears throat> uh, Fallen Angel is often, uh, depicted as having the, uh, head of a male and the head of a female, um, or multiple heads. So, I thought he was pretty cool, the, uh, they're two-headed issues uh, showing the uh, duality between man and woman. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> um, and if you guys are interested, I can tell you about this altar here. <coughs> so this altar was originally painted blue, um, like the inside there. And, um, all the crosses were on it, uh, Mary was, uh, you know, blue and white, and, um, what happened was, and there's a painting in the back of, uh, 
Anthony and Chris. So, Saint Anthony in Voodoo is associated with uh, Papa Legba, and Papa Legba is Ishu. So, I think those guys kind of like it that I have that painting in there. Um, it came with there, but it just so happened, you know. Um, they haven't asked me to remove it or anything. And there's also a, I'm trying to think what his name is. Um, there's an image of a child in there. Um, it's a saint that, uh, is popular in the Hispanic community. I'm trying to think of what his name is. Um, but it's like a small shrine within the shrine there. Um, and I need a new ball pair because this is supposed to turn on. Um, but yeah. The uh, velvet and all that. I mean, all of, all of this was a part of it. Um, so. But uh, unfortunately, the back is uh, starting to rot. So I don't know what to do about that. Um, but it's really old, and uh, let me give you some background on this thing. So, <clears throat> it was a radio originally, um, and it was gutted by the previous owners of it. And they transformed it into a Catholic shrine, and um, some guy that uh, had an estate sale uh, with the family. I don't know if they passed away, if they moved or what. Um, the guy that sold this, he was telling me, uh, this was in Colorado when I got this, because <clears throat> I used to live in Colorado before I lived in uh, Ohio, before I moved here. Um, he uh, got this from someone that found it under a crawl space under a house. And um, apparently they were using it as like a family shrine. And um, the history is um, he thought it was, it was dating back to uh, at least the 50s, this thing. So, um, you can tell it was once a radio. Um, they, all they did was they, they guided it, they took all the inside out. Uh, they did all the stuff inside. Uh, there's stars in there, you know. Um, the beautiful velvet, uh, the flooring that's in there is uh, green carpeting. Um, so it's just, it is beautiful. Um, but when I started, uh, when I bought this, I, uh, started using it for these guys. Um, and, uh, and I tried, I tried to remove these. But, um, over time what happened was they decided they wanted me to paint it black and red, um, to make it look like a, uh, Kremanda theme. <coughs> uh, thing going on. So, um, so they had me paint, uh, the Madonna here black too. But if you look into the story behind the Black Madonna, the Black Madonna is often associated with uh, Mary Magdalene and Sophia. So it's not blasphemy that they had me paint her black, honestly. Um, <laughs> you know, I know most people would be like, oh, that's horrible. But if you look into, like, the stories of the Black Madonna and all that, 
Um, not to mention that she's connected heavily with Urzili. Um, the uh, voodoo goddess who is often associated with the Virgin Mary. Um, Urzili was uh, kind of similar to Mary Magdalene. Uh, supposedly she was um, a prostitute. Not that I believe Mary Magdalene was actually a prostitute, but... <coughs> Um, so anyway, it's just kind of interesting that they had me do that, um, but, uh, yeah, of course some of the crosses are upside down, they're St. Peter crosses, uh, and then some of them are right side up, um, so the cross is, uh, sacred to uh, the Luciferian and especially the uh, Luciferian that practices um, Kambanda. Um, you know, Satanists think they're edgy by inverting crosses, but the thing is, the cross uh, is that's inverted is called the Peter's cross. Um, he decided to be crucified upside down. So, I'm not doing this just, you know, because of it's cool and satanic. Um, it actually means something. So, <coughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, you'll hear, uh, Satanist. You know, be like, well, why are crosses so big in Kambanda? But, you know, I thought, like, oh, it's a symbol for just Jesus and all that. But it's not. I mean, that's the thing. It's a symbol for the crossroads also. <coughs> um, so, yeah. There is that uh, beautiful statue. Um, well, up there. Um, yeah, uh, it's crazy. Um, but anyway, I mean, it, if Christ is Lucifer, then, you know, yeah, why not, right? But I would also like to point out that, uh, with the god, uh, Kitsukualto, um, who is uh, similar to Lucifer um, and Christ. Uh, his symbol is the cross also. So, um, yeah. <coughs> so, anyway. <coughs> so there is my wonderful pot. The candle burned. So. Yep. Then let's uh, there is that statue. Um, if you guys recall, I showed that off. Reviews. Um, speaking of Mary Magdalene, she had so yep. And then this is uh, my issue Lucifer statue. Um, that's pretty much what it looks like in Kambanda. Book, I would like to do a review on it when I'm done. Um, it's going to be a little different from what I'm used to reviewing with you guys, but it is called uh, Divine Doppelgangers, and it's about uh, 
how uh, Yahweh has divine lookalikes, and uh, one of the main players in that book is Kamash. Um, so, um, anyway, if you like this, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you.